Hello, my name is Omidator. Welcome to today's show. I still don't have a name for this uh, show. I guess it's going to be an ongoing thing though, where I test uh, guitar gear and amps and, and pedals and, and all, all kinds of things. So if you have a suggestion for uh, what I could name this show, I would very much appreciate it if you'd leave it in the comments below. That rhymes. Fantastic. All right, today we're checking out this. This is the Selmer uh, Triple and Bass 50 Mark II uh, all tube head. Uh, what I've been able to dig up on this amplifier is that it's uh, an old amplifier that was manufactured from, I believe, uh, 65, you know, 1965 till the mid-70s or so. So this is a very, very old specimen indeed. Uh, this is actually uh, an amplifier that combines a guitar channel, so to speak, and, and a bass channel. So you can use this uh, with guitars and bass. Uh, people say it sounds uh, similar to a Marshall JTM-45. So if that gives you a point of reference, then well, that's great. Uh, today we're gonna try to make it metal a little bit. Now that's uh, very hard to do indeed. I will say I think this amplifier sounds fantastic, but it's definitely not ideal for metal. However, if you uh, play those kind of uh, stoner metal things and doom metal and that kind of stuff, sludgy sounds that, you know, where it's supposed to sound dirty and, and kind of bad in some sense, then this amp would give you a very unique sound indeed, very recognizable. Uh, and it has that slightly vintage, fuzzy, uh, crunchy kind of tone uh, that you'll hear later. I will say, uh, I think the lead tone, I play a solo in the demo you're gonna hear, I think the lead tone sounded fantastic. Uh, I could have dialed it in better if I had more time, uh, but you know, generally the lead tone was uh, really, really impressive in my opinion. I did uh, put an overdrive pedal in front of the amp. We discussed all of this in the last episode where we checked out the orange uh, dual terror. Uh, so the procedure is the same. There are going to be pictures of uh, how the pedal is set and all that kind of all that kind of stuff once the demo comes on. This amplifier, uh, again, as far as I've been able to dig up, suppose I, I don't know what's in the preamp section. Mm, I mean, it, even even if I were able to dig up what the original tubes were, they might very well have been replaced since then because this amp is what 40, 50 years old, something like that. Uh, I do know that originally it came with uh, two EL34s in the power section and a GZ34 tube uh, as a, the rectifier tube uh, back in the days where amps still used rectifier tubes. But that's honestly pretty much all the information I can give you. Uh, there's not a whole lot on this amp out there and you're probably never going to be able to get your hands on one. <laughs> Me neither. This is not mine. Let's, um, let's take a look at the front of the amp. All right, taking a look at the amp from left to right, we're going to see we have two channels. We got the bass channel and the normal channel, and they both have the exact same configuration where you have a volume knob, a treble knob, and a bass knob. The knobs have fallen off on the normal channel, but hmm, still works. There's two inputs on each channel, and uh, honestly, I don't know the difference between these two inputs. This is a very old amplifier, so I doubt that they are uh, different uh, input levels, you know, for active and passive preamps and excuse me, pickups and so on and so forth. However, what I do know is that if you have a patch cable like this one, you can essentially link the two channels together like this and then plug your input in wherever you really want to and you can mix and match the channels however you want to, which is very cool indeed. Now, it's important to note that this is a very old amplifier indeed, so uh, the absence of a gain knob might confuse some of you. Uh, back in the day, there just wasn't a, a separate gain knob. If you want more overdrive and distortion, you turn up the amplifier, which is why this volume is maxed out. <laughs> Anyhow, last thing, uh, the power switch and an LED to indicate that the amplifier is on. Now let's take a look at the back. Taking a look at the back of the amplifier, we got some things and stuff. There's some duct tape, which is nice. We got a hardwired power cable. This right here is, I, I would assume that it's a ground or a fuse or something, but I'm not really certain. I mean, this is where you adjust the bias, but uh, I, I don't fucking know, man. I don't fucking know. Anyway, you got speaker uh, outs. You got a 15 ohm and a seven and a half ohm. So in other words, just 16 and eight ohm, uh, which is the standard nowadays. Yeah, th th that's, that's it. It's, it's neat. Serial number. Also, this uh, cabinet right here, I'm just uh, doing a quick shot of all this diddly do stuff. It's a 2x12 with our two Celestian speakers. We have a BL12100 and a 7080. Uh, as you can see, this is a fully open cabinet. It's been modified by the previous owner. 
Um, so not my friend that I borrowed it from, but the guy who sold it to him. As you can see the cloth is kind of a little messed at the top and so on and so forth because it's been cut in half basically and reattached somehow. Don't ask me, I, I have no idea. It's all mic'd with uh, an SM57, you'll see the full signal chain in the demo that's coming right up.
So what's the deal with the Seller Treble and Bass 50 Mark II? Well, it's an all-tube amplifier that was built a very, very long time ago. Officially, it's a 51 amplifier, however, it's not efficient enough to be at the loudness level of a modern 50 watt amplifier. In fact, I had it cranked to the maximum and I could still be in the same room uh, with the amplifier without any hearing aid. Uh, and, and well, it was pretty damn loud, but I could actually do it, unlike with a lot of other uh, modern 50 watt amplifiers. So this amplifier isn't particularly loud and it doesn't have a lot of gain. In fact, as you saw, you might have noticed uh, on the pictures of the uh, Jet City Afterburner Dual Stage Overdrive that I put in front of uh, of the amps that I test, uh, I would usually use it as a boost, but here there simply wasn't enough gain to get that metal tone. So I had to dial in a little bit of extra gain from the pedal. I like to not do that uh, because I want the sound of the amplifier and the gain staging of the amplifier, but there just wasn't enough gain here, so I had to give it just a little extra push. Uh, I did that both with the rhythm and the lead guitar, uh, however, more so with the lead guitar, as I do need a little more gain uh, to play those uh, solos and so on and so forth. Now, uh, I'm aware I didn't show you any pictures of uh, the settings I used on the amplifier. Reasoning for that is, well, a couple things. First of all, as you saw, some of the knobs had fallen off, so you can't really see it anyway. And I don't really know where the thing is actually at, because I can only really turn it from minimum to maximum and just use my ear uh, to get to the point that I like and also beyond that I used both uh, channels I used both the bass and the normal channel in conjunction as I showed it, that you could do earlier for both the rhythm and the lead tone uh, so it's kind of a concoction of different things you just gotta experiment with this thing to get a tone out of it now uh, the metal tone that I got in the end wasn't really that great uh, it was very very vintage sounding had that really vintage sounding breakup uh, where you get that uh, kind of boom boom sound when you do the palm mutes uh, so it's not very aggressive sounding and it doesn't cut through the mix that well for metal uh, however it has a lot of other potential uses as it is an, uh, a vintage amplifier in many respects and it sounds very much like one uh, you can use it to achieve practically any vintage sound whether it be clean or some bluesy overdrive or whatever whatever you might come up with and you can use it with bass as well. Uh, I've heard that it's not really that great with bass, so I would stick to guitar for the uh, for the amplifier itself, uh, as it does sound really, really good uh, for that vintage kind of tone. It's very well suited for single coils. There was a clip with single coils there uh, where you can hear that. Um, the friend I borrowed it from, he has a really nice guitar with some fat sounding single coils in them that just sound absolutely fantastic through this amplifier. I'll have a link to their EP below as well. Um, so you can hear uh, what that sounds like, where the Orange Dual Terror and the Selmer treble and bass 50 Mark II were used uh, for each guitarist. And let's see if you can pick them out, see uh, if you can hear which one used what. I won't give anything away. Um, the single last thing I wanted to, uh, to say is that uh, for the cabinet, I decided to mic up just the 7080 speaker. It seemed to have slightly more like top end and a little more of a glassy open sound than uh, the other one. I don't remember, what was it, BLH100 or something, something like that. It was another Celestian speaker, but uh, I did prefer the 7080 just a slight bit over that one. Uh, so I mic'd it with that. You probably won't be able to find this amplifier anywhere in the world ever, ever again. It's, it's very rare. It's not exactly something that's in high demand either. Uh, so, it's been an, an absolute pre- It's been an absolute pres- It's been an absolute pleasure to deal with this amp, uh, and I'm glad that I uh, got to do that. It's uh, interesting to delve into the past and see uh, if you can bring it up to a modern standard, which I couldn't really do, uh, but it was interesting nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll stick around for the next one. Until then, have a great time, my name is Ominator, signing off.